So hi, Camilla, welcome to the Oxford Conversations on Ownership. I'm really delighted that you can join us today. Uh, my name is Mary Johnstone-Louis and I'm here speaking with Camilla Hagen-Sorley, who's speaking to us from Norway and really looking forward to this conversation with you, Camilla. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Mary. It's a true honor to be here and to be able to speak about a topic um, I feel strongly about. Super. Well, not just one topic, but hopefully multiple topics that we'll get to explore because you're a leader in, in kind of multiple areas at the moment. And one thing I wanted to kick off with is actually a very specific area where you put a lot of your personal expertise and, and, and support, um, which is the she community. So I have to ask you about she community. What is it and why is it important to you? Well, the SHE community is an organization that was founded um, and exists really in order to move forward the agenda of diversity and inclusion. And the goal is to uh, be a part of closing the global uh, gender diversity gap. The aspect of uh, COVID-19, uh, the, um, uh, the years it will take to close the global uh, gender gap has actually increased from 99. 0.5 years to 135.6 years, according to the World Economic Forum. And uh, this is, of course, a number um, that we believe is way too high. And um, we're attacking this uh, issue from many, from many angles. Um, and one of the most important angles is to promote more women leadership. And we do know that investing in women is a key to solution to positive uh, development. Mm -hmm. I'm also the a mother of uh, two daughters, really want for them to be able to follow their dreams and reach their, their goals without uh, having a barrier of what kind of gender they are and, um, and have the same opportunities as, as their brothers. Super. Well, thanks so much. And you're, you're also an owner of Kanika. Just what are the headlines that our listeners should know about? What is Kanika and its major businesses? Yeah, so Kanika is a family investment company. It's based in Oslo, uh, Norway, and also Switzerland. We are uh, mainly in fast-moving consumer goods, retail, e-commerce, e um, and also real estate, in addition to a financial portfolio, uh, mostly exposed to health and solving many of the large health uh, problems that we see today. Um, uh, so we are sec I'm the second generation. My father was the founder, and... Uh, we are all um, present together in the company. Oh, fantastic. So tell us more a little bit about your role. What does it mean for you in terms of your day to day? What's your role at the moment? Well, so one of the owners, as one of the owners and second generation, I have uh, been working most of our, my career inside of the company. Um, and uh, for the last years in an operating role in, in our largest assets, uh, which is... Um, really providing me with the opportunity to understand the company from the inside, connect and build um, important uh, insights and, and connections with all the, the employees and to understand context from an angle that I believe is crucial for us to become as good owners as we can be. Um, on the other hand, um, uh, I do have a board um, commitments and a very strong passion also as, a, as an owner to, um, to drive the uh, agenda of making us staying, um, staying relevant in the future. And I do believe that ownership equals responsibility, but it's also the opportunity to, to drive positive impact and, and that companies are vehicles for change and mm -hmm. how we govern our ownership does matter. It matters in the aspect of taking care of existing workplaces, but also in a rapidly changing uh, world, creating new ones. So to make sure that we uh, drive our company forward uh, in becoming and be a part of the solution for a better tomorrow is the key aspect that will make sure that we stay relevant. Mm -hmm. So um, the ownership um, agenda uh, is worked in very, very closely dialogue uh, with management and um, communication is is key. Yeah, no, I think those are great, great insights. And, and then thinking about from your perspective, from Kanika at least, what does long term mean? We hear so much about long term thinking, long term ownership. What what does that mean to you as you look to the future right now? 
we have, of course, also also viewed ourselves as long term, as many family businesses do. And uh, there's lots, lots of incredible opportunity in that. It allows us to take more risk and to invest in, in, in the critical solutions needed for the company to succeed uh, tomorrow. It provides us also with the opportunity to, to be responsible on a much kind of in a greater aspect. Um, on the other hand, uh, we have experienced that we sometimes can be too long term and, uh, and that um, kind of the lack of action on the short term initiatives, which is okay. also important. And this kind of sense of urgency and entrepreneurial spirit uh, that goes hand in hand with being kind of eager to see results now. So I think it's kind of both a pros and cons and in combination. Uh, it's a fantastic su success formula to uh, apply the long-term vision, but with an entrepreneurial mindset and a kind of eagerness to be a little bit, a uh, little, little bit impatient. Yeah, no, I think that's that's the right combination. And, and when you think about long-term from an owner's perspective, maybe for yourself or for other owners that you've had the chance to spend time with, what what does that time horizon mean to them? Are they talk, are, are, are responsible owners talking about what kind of, of, of time horizon in your view, just from your experience? I believe the really kind of true uh, visionary uh, leaders manage to, uh, to make those choices uh, that make them um, stay relevant in a long-term perspective, even though the choices are not that popular. Uh, at that moment. And we have had several examples um, from that in our perspective as well. But then on the other hand, it's in specially listed companies is, uh, you know, you have to meet your, um, um, your monthly uh, targets. And, and I guess a, a really kind of critical factor here is how to incentivize management mm. for that, how to incentivize management to also think long term. That is, I believe, I, that's what I see where the the real issue uh, is and the true uh, visionary long-term uh, thinkers and owners manage to do that in a very um, solid way. What's been your experience of why it's important for business schools to begin to do more with the topic of ownership? Lots of uh, business schools uh, should also have to adapt into for the future, you know, the future of tomorrow. And what we uh, what we see, and I guess what you know as well, Mary, is that 70% of the global uh, GDP comes from somehow family owned uh, businesses. So uh, ownership um, is really here to stay. And I also believe that the way that owners pursue their responsibility and and power and ownership governance has changed. They are more active than before. And to, to educate, educate on that is, is critical for owners to understand uh, how to drive the companies forward in the best possible way, both for the company themselves, but also for the, the world and the society in general. And I, I do believe that in, I mean, historically we've had, mm -hmm. um, and we still have the economic system that we have, uh, but in a rapidly changing uh, world uh, and um, um, with our environmental focus, uh, we will see some um, changes also in so many aspects of the society from the economy to consumer behavior to all the drivers also within within technology and, and owners also need to, to better understand how to how to navigate that. I believe it's it's um it's also something you know you need to to experience but to get that academic uh input hand in hand uh, uh, I really believe it's, it's a great value for the the owners that are growing up today. Mm, absolutely well and going back then to your motivation that we kicked off with which is your motivation for she community are you optimistic about the future of women in family businesses and why or why not? Yes. Well, of course I have to say yes. Um, um, because I'm get en engaged in the agenda. So I'm uh, um, me and my, my, my sister, uh, we're two sisters growing up in the family business. Uh, and of course, for us, it's been completely natural to be become a, a, a women leaders. But we see, of course, around us in other family businesses and in the whole 
um, uh, business sector and, and financial sector um, uh, that it has been, you know, mostly male dominant. Um, and um, lots of research shows that diverse teams, management groups, boards, and also owner ownership groups uh, perform better um, than non-diverse teams. So diversity fuels innovation uh, and make, will make us uh, more uh, steady uh, for the years ahead. So that's of course still why that agenda is, is important to, uh, to drive. Yeah. And I think it's really relevant for everyone also in an ownership uh, perspective that we um, challenge our own thinking, that we challenge how we view things and how we believe that things are set because this is changing all the time. And I think our biggest asset in, in being leaders and owners is humility, understanding our humility in that aspect and, and to uh, challenge the status quo, also our own status quo. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's that that summarizes really nicely your perspective, Camilla. So thank you so much for sharing with us. We're delighted that you're uh, along the journey with us. And thank you. It's been really a, a pleasure to talk with you today. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Marie.